Love is the greatest strength in the world. Love conquers everything and everyone. We need love. Understanding true love. Making people feel they are loved and giving love freely. It is the greatest gift that someone can offer. Do all through love, nothing through constraint. These words of St. Francis have become the slogan for our journey today. Seeing the wonderful land that gave life to St. Francis de Sales after 400 years of his death is a moment of powerful inspiration for us. The place where a person is born contributes to shaping of their character. Francis de Sales was born in this land of peaks, glaciers, valleys, carved out by rushing torrents and lakes that mirror the wide blue sky. Do all through love, nothing through constraint. We do not know how often St. Francis de Sales would have repeated this phrase in this land. And now the echoes of his touching words engraved in our hearts makes us feel a strong sense of the tenderness, gentleness and marvellous figure of St. Francis de Sales. The land of Annecy is an area that radiates love and offers us so many precious pearls for our life. Dear members of the Salesian family, I invite you to enter this city of Annecy, the place of St. Francis de Sales. Let us consider the roots of our patron and our founder. How can we not think that John Bosco too was a Savoyard? He was not born in a castle, but had the same gift as Francis did, a gentle, faith-filled mother. Christian mothers generate saints. In a castle like Francis, or in a run-down country shack like John. They say that the first sentence Francis managed to put together was, the good God and my mother love me very much. The good God watched over Francis and John and gave them both a big heart. The two were destined to somehow cross. One day, John Bosco calmly told a group of naive young men, we will call ourselves Salesians. The water from the streams of Savoy, like the spirit that matured in Francis de Sales, reached Turin and then the entire world. This driving force of love, which shaped and defined the life and mission of Francis, which then inspired Don Bosco, is an invitation today to embark on our journey. A glance at some of the significant places in the life of St. Francis de Sales will surely revive our spirit. This land, the ancient Duchy of Savoy was nestled between France, Italy and Switzerland. Here he led a pastorally active life with intense preaching which enabled him to carry out many reforms and with patience and kindness to pave the way for many conversions. A person of noble spirit, sensitive, sharp and penetrating, he was a great master of spiritual life, opening up the parts of asceticism to all and emphasizing the essence of the spiritual life in the love of God and neighbor. St. Francis possessed in him the grace and beauty of a good man and he fascinated those who met him. How much he resembled Don Bosco in this too. Just as Jesus could say, learn from me, 
Prayam meek and humble of heart. And his refrain was, you can all be saints wherever you are. In a beautiful expression attributed to him, it would be said, we must flower where God has planted us. The convent of the foundation of the Visitation Sisters is a place of a great spiritual adventure. Many people entrusted themselves to the spiritual direction of St. Francis de Sales. Among them, John de Chantal, a young, wealthy and widowed noblewoman with four children. In the true sense of the word, it was an encounter of sanctity. Francis wrote to her in a very expressive terms, Always keep yourself in God's presence with holy freedom of spirit, complete trust in His mercy, without scruples, without distress and without disturbance. Place your heart in the wounds of our Lord, gently and not by force of arms. And in a letter from 1604, you need to do all through love and nothing through constraint. It is not mere slogan, it is a way of living and for us like a fourth Salesian vow and a characteristic of a Salesian family that would distinguish us is the kindness. Charity is the measure of our prayer because our love for God is shown to our love for our neighbor, he said. This is the prayer of life in Salesian style. St. Francis de Sales says that to feel God's heart and to open one's heart to our brothers and sisters, they are both intimately linked. The sensitivity of Francis, his entering into dialogue with everyone, have great value because they open up to friendship, show the significance of providence, the way of approaching and interacting with every individual through his proverbial gentleness and loving kindness. Don Bosco was deeply struck by the extraordinary figure of the saint, who fascinated him so strongly that already as a young seminarian, he made this resolution before his priestly ordination. The charity and kindness of St. Francis de Sales will guide me in everything. The magnificent characteristics of Don Bosco's Salation spirit and the precious values of Salation youth spirituality can be better appreciated when we understand how our founder drank from this rich wellspring to quench his thirst for life and for his spiritual growth. In the memoirs of the oratory, Don Bosco said that the oratory began to call itself after St. Francis de Sales because with the protection of the saint, they wanted to imitate his extraordinary meekness and winning of souls. The watchword that Don Bosco gave to his relations, strive to make yourself loved, were the words of St. Francis de Sales. For him, Francis de Sales was a genuine inspiration Above all, because he was a true pastor, a master of charity, a tireless worker for the salvation of souls. We are in the chapel of St. Francis de Sales. How many humiliations, how many efforts, how much tears it cost Don Bosco. We can truly say that he did all through love, nothing through constraint. Here we feel the heartbeat of Don Bosco. 
Also, in the person of his dear sons, Michael Rua, Dominic Savio, Michael Magone, all represent an infinite host. It was an exuberant sense of friendship that the boys felt for Don Bosco. His boys would testify about him with an almost monotonous insistence. He loved me. An eminent rector of a large Portuguese college had come to Turin to ask Don Bosco for advice, recalls Father Caldone. When he had come into his presence, he presented the saintly educator with his questions regarding the way to educate the pupils in his college. Don Bosco listened to him very attentively without interrupting him. When he had finished speaking, the Jesuit priest summed up in a single question what he wanted to know. How will I succeed in educating the boys in my college well? And then he was silent. John Bosco replied to the priest, who was probably expecting a long speech, with a single phrase, love them. Like St. Francis, Don Bosco chose the way of the heart, not constraint. And this will always be the right path in our Salesian family. Valdoco is a living testimony of thousands of miracles that came from strong love. The first courtyard at the oratory in Valdoco was Don Bosco's heart. One of them, Saint Luigi Orione, would write, I would walk on burning coals to see him once more and to thank him. Don Bosco found his happiness in the happiness of others. He wanted his boys to come to his house willingly. They would find there a family atmosphere where they truly felt loved. In this basilica of Mary Help of Christians, by the side of Don Bosco's casket, is the most privileged and blessed place for the Salesian world. People who want to see Don Bosco pass by here all the time, for which thousands of people have said, thank you for being there, and beside you I am someone. He listened to the boys most attentively, as if the things they were saying were all very important. Sometimes he would get up or walk with them in the room. At the end of the conversation, he would accompany them to the door, open the door himself and bid them farewell by saying, we are always friends. 29 December, 1887, Don Bosco was dying. At the end of the day, he summoned Father Rua and Bishop Caliero. He took them by the hand and said softly, Love each other like brothers. Love each other. Help each other and bear with each other like brothers. The help of God and the merry help of Christians will not fail you. Promise me to love each other as brothers. This was for them and for the whole Salesian family. Let us entrust our commitment to Don Bosco so that he will teach us to live out our resolution with passionate love. Where there is misunderstanding, where there is rejection, where there is antipathy and conflict, where there is indifference, division, where there is so much uncertainty and insecurity, we need to just remember this magical phrase. Do all through love and nothing through constraint.
The proposal of this trena is truly fundamental and relevant to all situations of our lives. If love for the Lord and for each of our brothers and sisters vibrates strongly in our hearts. Therefore, let us remember every day and in all our houses and works the slogans. Strive to make yourself loved and do all through love and nothing through constraint. Making these holy words resound and radiate everywhere. Thanks to Don Bosco and Francis de Sales, throughout the world, every day, thousands of miracles of love take place, wrought daily by the Salation family, on behalf of the young and the very poor. As Don Bosco used to say, whoever loves is loved in return. Let us continue to live this call in a prophetic and concrete way, so that the words resounding in our family will always be, Strive to make yourselves loved, and do all through love, and nothing through constraint. Then we can change the world. Let us conclude with a fervent prayer before the heart of St. Francis de Sales that is found still incorrupt in the Visitation Monastery in Treviso. Dear St. Francis, we, members of the Salation family, entrust ourselves and the young people in our works to you. Give us your heart and your spirit. Help us to walk the ways of love so that our faith and life are never arid nor without order but always animated by that divine love that makes every action of ours filled with love. You said the measure of loving God is to love Him without measure. Teach us to love God and others without measure, always imparting that gentleness and loving kindness. Help us to overcome all indifference, discord, tiredness and fear and to respond with patience, kindness and charity. Make our thoughts, words and deeds always a concrete expression of love. Amen.